Hello, YouTube family. I pray that you had a wonderful and prosperous 4th of July weekend. Me, myself, I just went to work. I had to do a double shift. So I'm just thankful for my job because I realize a lot of people don't have a job. You know, I'm a little tired in my body, but I'm just thankful today that my family is well, my husband is well, and many of you are well. I want to send my condolences to the Timothy Wright family and his church family. I don't know if any of you heard about it, but the man of God uh, that sings one of the classical gospel songs, Trouble Don't Last Always. No, 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 trouble don't last always. And also, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, that song. Um, His wife died in a car accident. They were in a bad car accident. And I just want to send out my prayers to that family that God will just do what he needs to do. Um, to heal and to discomfort them in this time of loss. Amen. So let's keep them lifted up in prayer. But I want to dedicate this video, as a matter of fact, to one of my newest family members. I don't call y'all subscribers. When y'all become a part of my page, you're family. Alright? I have a new family member. If you can just go down my page, her name is One Rasta Raven. She has dreadlocks. Well, as a matter of fact, she looked at my video where I was talking about dreads or locks, and I said, <laughs> my hair is not called dreadlocks because my hair is not dreadful. I call my hair locks. But she doesn't know just her comment alone, and I felt her love in it. It made me just open my mind up. A lot of times we'll have our mind narrowed in the way we want to think about things, but sometimes we got to open up our mind. So that we can see where everybody else is coming from. What their views on things are. But I went to a website. As a matter of fact, it's called www.thebutterflytribe.com. And I began to read about the history of dreadlocks. Um, I didn't want to be narrow-minded. Because she said, you have locks basically, but I have dreadlocks. And, you know, she's happy about it. And that really just like made me just say, okay, Tracy, open up your mind and get more history on dreadlocks. I'm not ashamed of it. I need to open my little narrow mind even more. And there's a lot of you that's narrow-minded out there, and you just need to research why people do what they do. Everybody, on every aspect, even in different religions. I'm a Christian. You know, I believe in speaking in tongues, laying on hands, casting out devils. But there's other religions out there, and we got to stop being so judgmental. A lot of people are raised up Catholic. A lot of people are raised up um, to serve Allah, Muslim. You know, we got to understand why people go the route that they go. They just don't wake up and say, oh, I want to be so-and-so. But it's always something that counteracts with something and causes us to do something. But when we come to a place to know what truth is, and the truth will always, always reveal itself. And we know who the truth is and what the truth is. Amen. But I'm not going to get into that. But I just wanted to let you know that I'm opening up my mind um, to really understand the history of dreadlocks. Not just my point of view. But let's think about somebody else's point of view. I'm going to read you something that I've seen on this website. Now, if you're so religious, don't go to their website because you're like, oh, that's offensive, that's offensive. You know, we got to stop being so religious and have a relationship. So when God tells us to research something or go into a place we feel like we shouldn't go into, our little minds won't close down. He wants to use those that's not afraid to go places nobody else wants to go. And I'm one of those people. Well, I'm reading from this website. It says, many times I have heard friends admit to me that because they have dreadlocks, they have been approached in the street by someone who wanted to sell their marijuana. The sellers approached these individuals solely because they had dreadlocked hair. None of the individuals use drugs or associated with those who do use. Dreadlocks have become so much associated with Rastafarian culture, which is in turn associated with smoking ganga, that few know the real roots and history of dreadlock hair. What are the traditional origins and meanings of dreadlocks? New generation Rastafarians will tell you that the culture of dread of locked hair came originally from Africa. 
But any knowledge beyond the continent that Lot came from is unknown. Where old generation Rastafarians hold great pride in their natural hair and see it as a symbol of their fight against Babylon, nonviolence, nonconformity, communalism, and solidarity. And as a heavy spiritual statement, many new generation of Rasta see their dreads as a passport to smoking ganga and listen to reggae music, not understand the real Rastafarian culture and values. Just like an American, America, and being an African American woman, when other cultures see us, other races see us, and we have dreads, they first want to associate us with the ones that gang banging and gangs, throwing up gang signs, smoking gang, in other words, they're talking about marijuana, blunt, you know, we're just right out hootlum. That's what they associate us with, um, even here in the States with our hair. So I can understand what they're saying right there. I don't know how much longer I got on this video, but tune in for part two. This is going to get good.